I'm Tony Marks. I'm the president of the New York Public Library. And welcome to our oh-so-humble trustees room. <laughs> I draw your attention to the mantelpiece. The city of New York has erected this building for the free use of all the people. So you are welcome, as are all the people. And we are honored to here be hosting and celebrating the Helen Bernstein Book Award for Excellence in Journalism, this uh, incredibly prestigious award uh, that is so important to the journalist community, to recognizing the amazing journalists uh, who do amazing work uh, in drawing the public's attention uh, to important current issues, events, and policies. I'm, of course, particularly delighted to again welcome the Bernstein and Feely families today, whose steadfast support has made this uh, important award possible. Uh, I hope you'll join me in, uh, in welcoming one of the library's greatest advocates, uh, supporter, Helen Bernstein Feely, who is here. Helen. And her family, her daughter Kathy. Where's Kathy? Where'd you go? There you go, Kathy. And her son Jim. Both here. Where's Jim? Both here tonight. There you are. Um, Helen and I were just uh, chatting, reminiscing, uh, amazing her own uh, career, uh, her own dedication to journalism, a family that goes back to uh, Leavenworth that has something to do with the Wallman Rink, uh, H&R Block. I mean, it's just unbelievable, the stories. Uh, embedded in this family and the stories that this family has told. And that this award now helps uh, others, uh, recognizing others for telling. Um, we gather in this great room, um, bringing together uh, an incredible number of journalists, uh, former uh, prize winners, uh, writers, academics, uh, library trustees. I don't know whether uh, the Rainers and uh, and Joan Hardy Clark have gotten here yet, but if not, they will be here shortly. Um, and of course, we are uh, joined tonight by uh, four of this year's finalists, Catherine Boo, uh, Rajiv Chandra Sekaran, David Sanger, and Tom Wilbur. And it's wonderful to have you all here. <laughs> Also present tonight, uh, as I said, previous Bernstein Award winners, uh, Ellen Schultz, Elaine Schialino, and Nina Bernstein are all here. So welcome. They know what a good party this is, so they just keep coming back. And they're most welcome. It's, it's an honor to have you here. Um, as I said, it's a privilege for the New York public uh, to be the home of the Bernstein Awards for the last 26 years of giving this award. Um, it brings prestige and recognition to our wonderful uh, establishment, to the library, and of course allows us to recognize and celebrate uh, journalists who join in the mission of this greatest of all libraries. Sorry, I work here. <laughs> but truly the greatest of libraries in making sure that we have an informed society. Sorry, true apologies since Tom Galanti, my friend and colleague who runs the Queen's Library, is sitting right there. <laughs> I always step right into it one way or the other. Um, so libraries, like newsrooms, are coping with questions of how to adapt to a digital future. You may have noticed. Um, the, uh, the library, in fact, uh, just recently, uh, just to give you a quick vignette, is, um, uh, let's see, a couple weeks ago we announced uh, that the New York public, working together with Queens and Brooklyn, have uh, made an unprecedented move so that all of the big six publishers are now selling e-books to libraries to lend so that people who can't afford books can get them in electronic version, the technology of access will now be accessible to all. And we did that, making sure that publishers and authors would be paid a fair price for their work. We are all in this together. <laughs> and just to show that you know we go from the modern to the, shall we say, somewhat less modern, just a couple hours ago in this very room, it looked a little different, a little less party-like. Um, we had a ceremony to announce uh, that the library's copy, one of the 
14 original copies of the Bill of Rights that has not effectively been seen in public uh, for 100 years while we have kept it safe other than at the bicentennial and a few other moments will now be made on permanent view uh, here at the New York Public Library as well as in Philadelphia. <laughs> so we, uh, we are at the library interested in the most modern of access and the most inspiring of historic access to ideas, to books, to documents. Um, and in that we have in common with those who are uh, represented here tonight and the work that you do. Um, the dedicated, passionate, accurate, strong reporters uh, who work in the trenches and dig deep to bring the public the information that they need to be an informed citizenry. We are partners with you in that and we are eager to make sure that our business model works going forward so we can continue to do what we do and I know you are eager to make sure that your business model works going forward because the democracy rests, the democracy rests, the one that Jefferson helped to found upon the work of the profession that we honor here tonight. Um, the five finalists uh, this year, of course, exemplify that amazing work. And uh, they are produced by an amazing and elaborate process. The library's review committee, um, which consists of library staff, spends hundreds of hours reading. This year, we have received over 100 submissions. And, uh, and that review committee includes my colleagues Jennifer Kraft, um, Karen Gassoni, Ryan Haley, Ken Johnson, Myra Lariano, Angela Montefanis, Billy Parrott, and Rich Reyes Gavillan, who are here this evening. Thank you so much for the amazing work and time that you put in beyond the time of the great work that you do at the library. Uh, and then their recommendations are forwarded the finalists to a selection committee of distinguished journalists who then independently read the finalists' work and select a winner. The selection committee is chaired by James Hogue, who I will introduce in just a minute, um, and his partners are Brooke uh, Kroger, uh, who is the Director of Global and Joint Program Studies and Professor of Journalism, uh, both at NYU, uh, Jack Rosenthal, um, who is uh, the President Emeritus of the New York Times Company Foundation, Lynn Povich, an advisory board member of the International Women's Media Foundation and Women's Rights Division of Human Rights Watch, Elaine Shiliolano, uh, who is the correspondent, of course, for the New York Times in Paris, a job that we all aspire to. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I aspire to. Um, <laughs> And Calvin Sims, a uh, program officer for journalism at the Ford Foundation, who could not be with us this evening. I want to thank all of you for the amazing work that you do, the time, the dedication. We know that you do that for the same reason that we're all here, which is to make sure that this profession uh, is recognized, that, uh, that greatness within it is recognized, and that we all uh, can celebrate it so that we can all continue to do it and to benefit from it. Um, so this evening we're going to uh, first hear from uh, James Hogue, uh, or sorry, no, we're going to come back to James uh, in just a little bit, um, but we're going to start with our guest speaker tonight, and that is uh, Janet Janjigian. Um, Janet is an Emmy Award winning television news and documentary journalist. She's the former Senior Vice President of Corporate Communications at MGM Studios and Managing Director of the Carmen Group. She began her career, distinguished career, in Washington, D.C. with NBC News and with ABC News' Nightline. Not sure how you do that exactly, but amazing. Um, she, looked, she later worked for CNN in Los Angeles. She's been honored with the Champion Tuck Award uh, from the Dartmouth School of Business and with a Gracie Award. Janet writes for the Huffington Post and for The Wrap. She's a member of the Pacific Council on International Policy, the Executive Council of Lupus LA, and the Alliance of Women in Media. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please join me in welcoming Janet to the stage.
Thank you, President Marks, for that very lovely, generous introduction, and I'm so